Hi, it's Hope from Under the Median. Today we're talking fresh produce. How to store it, how to use it, how to keep it fresh as long as possible, and what to do if it looks like it's gonna go bad before you can use it. For the purposes of this video, I literally just grab things out of my refrigerator and off of my countertops to show you what I really have in my house at this very moment and how I plan to use it. So let's begin all the way over here at the left and we'll work our way to the right. The first thing I want to point out is there are four items that I really advise people to have on hand at all times in their home to cook with. Those four things are onions, garlic, carrots, and celery. So why those four things? Well, those four things happen to form what is called a mirepoix. That's a French word that basically a mirepoix are the ingredients that form the base of most recipes in any nationality of cooking. So all nationalities have what would could be referred to as a mirepoix, but they vary slightly. For instance, you could use most of these mirepoix ingredients in, in Italian cooking and definitely in American cooking. But if you're going to use it in some Mexican recipes, then you're probably going to take out one of the ingredients and you're going to throw in some peppers or you're going to throw in some cilantro. So although the ingredients will vary just a little bit, and the seasonings will vary just a little bit. When you have basic ingredients on hand that form the base of most of your recipes, you can go a long time without stepping foot inside of a grocery store. So let's talk about these four ingredients real quickly. Garlic and onions. Where do they belong? They do not belong in your refrigerator. <laughs> they belong on your countertop and here is why. The humidity levels inside of your refrigerator are way too high for vegetables like onions and garlic. Do you see this paper thin shell on the outside of the onion? That's designed as a protective layer and so it's perfectly fine to put it uh, in just a bowl or maybe one of those mesh bags on your countertop and it will keep just fine for quite some time that way. But when you put it in the crisper of your refrigerator, that's when you're going to wind up with humidity that is just too high and this paper thin coating is going to become damp and it's going to trap moisture inside of this onion and actually rot it from the inside out. And it's going to go bad much more quickly in your refrigerator even if you put it in the crisper drawer, than it is outside of the refrigerator on your countertop. So for the same reason, leave the garlic on your countertop as well. The carrots, well, they actually do belong in your refrigerator. <laughs> it's perfectly fine to leave carrots in your refrigerator and carrots will last you three to four weeks in your refrigerator. What about celery? Celery just seems to be one of those vegetables that either it's ripe or it's bad. <laughs> and there doesn't, and limp, and it doesn't seem to be a whole lot in between those two things. Well, let me show you how you can keep these fresher longer. What you want to do is get yourself out a piece of aluminum foil, wrap up this celery, take it out of the plastic bag that you bought it in from the grocery store, put it inside of this foil and then stick it in your refrigerator. If you do this with celery, it will last three to four weeks in your refrigerator, which is far longer than it will should you leave it in that plastic bag. Here's why. When celery ripens, it gives off ethylene gas. The ethylene gas is trapped inside of that plastic bag in which you bought the celery from the grocery store and it actually causes that celery to rot faster than it will if you take it out of the plastic bag and then simply wrap it up in the cellophane. Now, if you know you're going to use this celery right away, you can go ahead and commit yourself. You can take it out of the plastic bag, cut the bottom of the celery off, and then simply separate all of the stalks of celery 
take the stalks of celery and cut them in half. Then place them in water in a, like a plastic Tupperware type container. Put water into the Tupperware container, put the lid on top, and that water will actually help the celery stay crisp and stay fresh longer. Here's the caveat. You want to change that water about once every 24 hours or so. You want to make sure that you keep fresh water on your celery and it will do you a favor and help this celery stay crisp and fresh. Now you'll notice I said take the stalks of celery and put them in the water in the refrigerator. You don't want to put this, this part that is on the interior of the celery, this part. You do not want to put that in the water. Do you see why? It has all of these leaves on top of it. The leaves will not do well long term in water. So instead, go ahead, take the heart of the celery out, this very middle part, chop it up, and you can use it um, for any recipe that involves celery. You can use it in casseroles, you can use it in eggs, you can use it, um, you can use it in soups, and it's perfectly fine to do that. I have been at friends' houses when they've been cooking with celery and physically cringed. <laughs> My friends have noticed it when they throw this part of the celery in the garbage thinking that it is not usable. Yes, it is. I will tell you very transparently that our family has a goal. Our goal is no more than 3% food waste. So that means that 97% of the food that comes into this house, we are going to eat or we are going to use, but what we're not going to do is throw it out. So because of that, we try to use every part of the plant that we possibly can. Now you'll notice when I started this part of the video, I told you to go ahead and cut the bottom part of the celery off. So is this edible? Yeah, no, not really. But that doesn't mean it's not usable. Go ahead, cut it off, wash it up really well, grab yourself a plastic bag. When you grab a plastic bag, you're going to place that celery, the bottom of the celery stalk, into this plastic bag, grab a thick black marker, a permanent marker, and put across this plastic bag vegetable stock. Stick this in your freezer and then you will be able to use all of the bits and pieces and scraps of the vegetables and the herbs that you use in cooking and you will be able to make delicious, amazing vegetable stock for your family. It is so easy to do. And if you will look in the description of this video, you will see that I have left you a link. I wrote a blog post that told you specifically, step by step, how to make vegetable stock and what you should put in the vegetable stock. There's actually just a few little things that don't work real well for vegetable stock. I tell you those things. Sometimes you should leave them out altogether. More often than not, what you really should do is put small portions of them in. And the reason for that is when you're using something that's a really strong flavor like cilantro, if you were to make vegetable stock and put a lot of cilantro stems or leaves in it, your vegetable stock is going to taste like cilantro and very little else. So if you will look at that link, you will see that I give you step-by-step -step instructions for making homemade vegetable stock. You can make it either on your stovetop or you can make it in a pressure cooker. I have used both methods and both methods work very, very well. So let's move along a little bit here. You'll notice that I have a coleslaw mix. I will be the first to admit to you that this is very unusual for me to have a coleslaw mix in my home. 99 times out of 100, I buy a whole head of cabbage before I buy this. Now, there are a couple of reasons for that. I feed my family of six on just $375 a month for food. So I really pay close attention to the price per pound of any product. This is about a dollar per pound. And most of the year, you would be hard pressed not to find cabbage for less than a dollar a pound for the whole head of cabbage. So generally, I do buy the whole head of cabbage, not only because it costs more, but anytime you buy something that's already been pre-cut, first of all, you don't know how long it's been in that bag. But if you'll look, you'll see that all of this cabbage mix has a lot of exposed edges. 
all of those cuts that have been made and all of those edges that are exposed gives just more surface area for it to more quickly rot and more quickly go limp and more quickly develop mold on it. So because of that, the shelf life of this product is going to be significantly less than a whole head of cabbage. I have kept whole heads of cabbage very easily in my refrigerator for three to four weeks at a time before I have used those heads of cabbage. Now people tend to shy away a little bit from cabbage, from whole heads thinking, yeah, but isn't that a lot of cabbage that's going to be wasted? Isn't, isn't this just a product that's prepared for me? I can use all of it straight out of the bag. Yes, you can. But I will point out to you that as with a lot of things in life, a whole head of cabbage is pretty much, you can use almost all of it. Literally, the only part of a head of cabbage that I tend not to use are the very, very outer leaves. And even those, you can wash them up and put them right into your stock bag and you can use those in making your vegetable stock. So you don't really even have to throw those away. Now I will point out when I talk about throwing vegetable scraps away, technically they shouldn't be thrown away at all. You should have a mulch pile somewhere in your backyard that you can throw all your vegetable stock or vegetable scraps and those will decompose and leave you with rich, amazing soil that you can use for plants around your home. Now, having said that, if you are going to save those outer leaves and throw them in this vegetable stock bag, what do you do with the core? You do exactly the same thing. I cut out just the very edge of the core. I go to close as I can to the core without getting into the core and then throw those core pieces right into the bag to make my vegetable stock. So what do you do with those, those large leaves at the edge of your cabbage? I very carefully take those off of the head of cabbage and I save them in a plastic bag. And in the next day or two after I've started using that cabbage, I'm going to stuff those cabbage leaves and make amazing stuffed cabbage for supper for the next night. They're so easy to make stuffed cabbage and it's absolutely delicious and really, really good for you. Let's move along on the table here. You'll see that I have a cucumber. Now cucumbers do belong in your refrigerator and they don't last that long. So we're talking about these vegetables in terms of shelf life. So if I were menu planning using all of these vegetables in front of me, which by the way, I will be very shortly, I am going to plan my menu based on the shelf life of these vegetables, which means that I am going to use this cucumber up long before I'm going to use some of the other things on the table that will last me longer into the month. Because the goal with menu planning should be, drum roll please, to stay out of the grocery store as long as possible. Why? Because statistically, the more times that you set foot in the grocery store per month, on average, the more you are going to spend that month on your groceries. Now, there are a multitude of reasons for that, but the long and short of it is that grocery store owners and also manufacturers of food products know that if they can just get you in that grocery store on a regular basis, especially if you are hungry, you are going to spend more money. The more time you're in the store, the more money you are going to spend. So if you wanna save money on your grocery bill every month, follow the exact tips and strategies I'm showing you in this video and stay out of the store as long as possible. Let's move along just a little bit. Over here we have potatoes. I have regular baked potatoes and I also have sweet potatoes. I try to keep both on hand. Where do these belong? Not in your refrigerator. These belong one of two places. You can leave them on your counter and they will stay fresh for a certain amount of time. If you wanna keep them a little bit longer and extend that shelf life, what you wanna do is put them in a place where they are happy. Potatoes are happiest somewhere between 42 to 43 degrees and upwards mm, getting around 50 degrees. So they like it just a little bit warmer than your refrigerator, but not as warm as the air in your home. If you can find a space in your home that will keep them 
at that temperature, then your potatoes are gonna stay fresh and stay happy for a much longer period of time. This method of storage for potatoes works really, really well in the winter time. Think of the storage units that you see in movies or maybe your grandparents had and you had a, a cellar that was below earth level. The reason that, that vegetables and fruits and produce stayed so well so long down there is because it kept it at a pretty consistent level that was above freezing and yet below 50 degrees. So in my home, I have a pantry all the way at the back of, of my basement. We have a walkout basement and the whole wall where my pantry is located is a wall that behind that wall is earth. So it's below earth level. What that means is in the winter time, I can buy potatoes at the very end of the season from farmers and buy large boxes of potatoes and take that box of potatoes if I want a little bit more of an R value in there and I wanna keep them a little bit more snug, then you can just crumple up newspaper and put it in that box of potatoes, put some newspaper pieces in there, and it will give just a little bit more of an insulation factor. So, and then put the whole box in the back of my, of my pantry and it keeps those fresh for a long period of time because believe it or not, even on cold winter days, that storage pantry stays at an almost perfect 45 to 50 degrees. A great way to do this is if you have an enclosed front porch or back porch, almost always you can keep potatoes in that area and they will stay happy for a long period of time into the winter. You'll be eating fresh potatoes. Moving along fruit. Fruit is always one of those things that it seems like shelf life is a definite consideration. Now, when I bring fruit home from the grocery store, first of all, I refuse to pay any more than a dollar pound for any kind of fruit. So I do buy my fruits and indeed my vegetables seasonally. I try to buy as much as possible from local small farms because I want to support my local economy. Now, having said that, you will find, for instance, that things like oranges will be on sale during the winter months because that's when the new crops come in in Florida and California. You will find them at their cheapest price in January, February, maybe a little bit even into March. So I purchase a variety of fruits every week and we eat them according to when they will go bad. So bananas are always first on the list, right? Now, bananas actually get sweeter as they age. So if you want a really good banana, you want to get a banana that has a few of those brown spots on the outside, not so it's completely covered with brown spots, but you will find an incredibly sweet banana on the inside that is at the perfect degree of ripeness and has not yet gone soft. However, if you find yourself in a position when you think, oh, they're going to go bad, it's okay, all you need to do is peel that banana, stick it in a freezer bag, stick it right in the freezer, and usually I tell people to label everything in their freezer, but believe me, if it's bananas in your freezer, you're gonna know it's bananas. But if you want to, write bananas on the outside of the freezer bag before you stick that in your freezer. And I always make a point of dating freezer bags as well, so you know when you put those bananas in the freezer. Then you can easily thaw them and use them for smoothies, banana bread, muffins, or any other thing that you would use in a baked um, fashion to use bananas. The next thing on the list would be definitely citrus fruit. And the final thing we're going to add during the month are harder fruits and or harder fruits like apples. Apples will stay fresh for a good three to four weeks. So if we're talking in terms of staying out of the grocery store as much as possible, for instance, even thinking about just doing basically once a month grocery shopping, then apples can be your best friend. Where's the best place to store apples? Well, apples, believe it or not, like it just above freezing. They adore temperatures of 31 to say 35 or 36 degrees. Go ahead, stick your apples into a bag. Get out some paper towels, lightly dampen the paper towels, and stick those in the bag with your apples. That will keep the moisture level perfect in that freezer bag and stick it in your refrigerator in the bottom part where, um, where you're to keep fruits and vegetables. Moving along, 
we have salad greens. Now, the growing season is not quite yet here where I live in the middle of part of the country, or I guarantee you, you would not be seeing any of my salad greens plasticized. <laughs> I guess that's what we call it. You can call it wherever you want, encased in plastic. That's another word for it. This is not the most friendly way to treat your greens. It traps too much moisture in there. Especially if you are buying greens from the farmer's market, what you really want to do, what you really want to do is go ahead and stick them in a colander, wash all the dirt off of them carefully, and then you're going to take your greens, pat them dry with either a paper towel or a clean, dry um, towel. Make sure that you get as much moisture off of them as possible. Moisture is not the friend of your greens. Now, I've used this method of storing greens for years, and greens will easily last a couple of weeks if you will treat them with care. So make sure the dirt is off of them. Make sure that you have most of the moisture off of them. Then go ahead and put them, and I generally leave the paper towel with them, a clean, dry paper towel, stick them into a plastic bag, seal this plastic bag at least three quarters of the way. Now I've read a lot on how to keep greens fresh and most people say you want just a little bit of air to get into the corner of that plastic bag and it's actually helpful with the greens. So I keep just an inch or so of this plastic bag open to the air and then make sure the rest of it is sealed and stick it in the refrigerator. I have kept greens for two weeks this way. The other thing you can do is if you have a big um, rectangle, because usually I have lots of greens, so I will tell you that our family is vegan, so believe me, there's generally lots of greens in this house. So if I have lots of greens, then I'm going to take a big rectangular Tupperware container, put the paper towel on the bottom of the container, stack the greens, the wash dried greens on top, stick the lid on it and stick it in the refrigerator and they have also kept very, very well for me that way. Now, what happens if your greens are looking a little bit eh, and they're just not gonna last? You can go ahead and just stick them in the freezer. Now, you can either cook greens before you put them in the freezer or you can just stick them in as they are. The difference is the amount of space that they take up in your freezer. They will take up less space if you go ahead and simmer them down a little bit because we all know we start out with a huge amount of spinach in a pan and it winds up with, oh, a little bit in the bottom because a lot of greens consist of water content. So go ahead, cook them down, let them cool a little bit, and then put them in one cup increments in freezer bags. Get all the air out that you can and then label the freezer bag as to what type of green it is. In this family, we eat nearly every kind of green that is available. If our carrots come from the farmer's market with greens on them, we use the greens. We freeze them and use the greens. Yes, they are edible. They make fantastic um, topping for, uh, for soups. You just stick that in the soup at the last you know, two minutes and it really, really has a lot of nutrition in it. So we keep our greens. There are a few kinds of greens that you should not eat, those including the greens on potatoes and also the greens on rhubarb. Those are both toxic, so don't eat those. I hope that you have found this video to be helpful with tips, tricks, and strategies for using fresh produce, making it last as long as possible, and then if it's not going to last before it goes bad, making sure that you keep it frozen or dehydrated for later use.